In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can stabilize shaky handheld footage right within Premiere Pro. So here are the th shots that I'm working with to show you that you can make a somewhat unstable shot perfectly stable, but there are going to be some shots that are too shaky, too unstable, and it's going to be impossible to stabilize them perfectly. So let's dive into Premiere Pro and show you how this works. So this is the shot. It doesn't have any stabilization to it, and you can see that it has some of that sort of hand jitter that you get from being handheld, especially with a smaller rig like a DSLR, mirrorless camera, iPhone, whatever you have, a lot of times you just get those subtle motions that if you stabilize it, it will take your footage and your video to that next level. So this clip right here has no stabilization on it. And so what you would want to do is go into your effects bin and drag the warp stabilizer effect onto this clip. That is found under distort, under video effects, or just type in warp and drag it onto the clip. As soon as you do that, it's going to start analyzing the video and it's going to try to process it and stabilize it. So depending on how fast your computer is, it's going to take longer or shorter and depending on how long the clip is. Now, an important note to using the warp stabilizer effect is that it's important to actually cut your video and trim it to the length that it's going to be. You don't want to be trying to stabilize a minute long clip if you're only going to be using 30 seconds or even five seconds of it at the end of the day. A 30 second clip too is gonna to take really long to process and add the stabilization too. You'll have much more success with this tool if you apply it to shorter clips. So now simply by applying the warp stabilizer effect, it has already actually stabilized this clip. And that's because this clip wasn't too shaky to begin with. But I do wanna go over these options here in the warp stabilizer panel so you know what's happening. So under the stabilization menu, you have the result, which you can choose. You want smooth motion or no motion. So for this clip, if I choose no, no motion, you can see that it analyzes it again. And this clip, it does a really good job at making it completely still. I can turn the effect off and you can see that there's lots of little hand motions with it on, no motion at all but you'll notice that it zooms in a little bit and it does that because it has to zoom in to be able to rotate and kind of scale and move the position around so that it does sort of make it completely stable. If your video does not do good at no motion, you might start to see some sort of warping or distortion. Choose the smooth motion and decrease the smoothness. So if we go down to 20% or so, you might see a little bit of motion here still, but it's very nice, it's smooth. It, and maybe that's something that you like better than having no motion. So play around with the smoothness. Next you have the method. So subspace warp is sort of the latest, and it's been around for in Premiere Pro for a while, but basically what it's going to do, it's going to do all kinds of things moving the video around, stretching it, scaling it, rotating it, adjusting the perspective, doing all of these things to try to stabilize it. You have these other options though that might work. So say I did position, it's just moving the position of the clip. It's not rotating it, it's not scaling it at all. You also have position, scale, and rotation, which is going to adjust all of those parameters of this clip to try to stabilize it. You also have perspective, which will actually rotate the video on its X and Y axis and basically try to bend it so that it looks stable. Now, because this clip looks pretty good, any of these kind of works well. I usually try to use subspace warp because that usually works pretty well. Next, you have your borders options. So right now we have it set to stabilize, crop, and auto scale. Let me just show you what only stabilization means. Look at the edges. You can see that there is this black little bit and that's because it's not auto scaling. While our statue here of William Shakespeare is relatively stable and say, like, let's put this up to 50%. With 50%, you get even more of this, and you don't want that because people are going to be able to see that. So generally, you would want to stabilize crop and auto scale. Stabilize and crop, though, if you play through that, what's going to happen is it crops the edges, so you don't see that jitteriness on the edge, and it crops it, but you still see this sort of black outline. 
stabilized crop and auto scale actually scales up the video so that you don't have any sort of transparent black lines around the edge of your video. You also have stabilize and synthesize edges. So what this means is it's going to actually look through your footage, it's going to stabilize it, and it's going to recreate the edges or try to recreate the edges and basically looking at these pixels to try to recreate. For this video, it doesn't look that good. Play around with that, but generally you wanna stick with stabilize, crop, and auto scale. And finally, you have these advanced settings down here. And this is what I would go to if these other options aren't working for you. Check here to do a detailed analysis. And this is going to go through it again, spend a little bit more time trying to stabilize your footage. You have an option for rolling shutter reduction. So when your video camera is moving around, you might get this sort of bending effect with things in your image. This will try to reduce that. You have automatic and enhanced. Enhanced is gonna be better. It just is gonna take longer to process, but when you're trying to stabilize a clip, might as well do this to try to try to get it to be the best as possible. The crop less versus smooth more percentage. This is basically telling Premiere Pro that if I want to smooth more, I'm going to have to crop more. So increasing this percentage to 75% or whatever, it's going to actually make it smoother, make it more stable, but then it might actually end up cropping more. And vice versa, if we want to preserve the aspect and the shot and the composition we have without getting as smooth, then you can put this less than 50%. Now, a lot of this you can't really see with this clip because this clip wasn't that unstable. So let's take this too unstable clip right here and apply some of these effects to it to see what's happening. Notice first though that this clip is really, really shaky. And I was doing this purposely to make a point, but when I apply the warp stabilizer effect to it, it just has its sort of standard effect set up. So smooth motion at 50% using the subspace warp. Take a look at the edges with the subspace warp. Look at how it looks warped. It looks kind of weird. It's kind of bending the image. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. And you might notice this in your footage if you have very shaky footage. It kind of looks really strange. It's really bending and stuff. So if we adjust this to, instead of subspace warp, to position, let's just say position rather, you're going to get rid of some of that warp, but it, it still looks warped in some sense. And same if we go to perspective, you're really going to see a lot of warp. In this background, things are getting stretched, squeezed. So you can play around with these settings on a, on a clip that is really unstable and see what works best. And for me, position scale and rotation actually works pretty well for this clip, but still it looks a little weird. And in this case, decreasing our smoothness might be the best bet. Maybe we can make it a little less smooth. We can deal with a little bit of the camera movement, but it's not going to really adjust and make our, our footage warped or looking bad. Here, this also might be a case for using the advanced detail analysis, because what I want to do is, is I do want to try to make this as stable as possible, but sometimes it's just impossible based off of the footage we're working with. So enabling that detailed analysis actually does work a little bit. And you can see here that it's auto scaling to 111%, which is much more than our other shot, which I believe was about 102%. And that's because it has to zoom in quite a bit to be able to stabilize as best as possible. But at when you do that, you lose resolution because you are zooming in. So let's look at the before and after. So here's the before and then after with the stabilization before with stabilization. So it did help quite a bit. It's a lot smoother. You don't get that jerky hand motion. It kind of looks like it's on a gimbal, a little stabilized shot, 
but again, it's not perfect, but we were working with the clip that was very shaky to begin with. So if you have any questions about this and applying the warp stabilizer, please let us know. But in general, you just have to kind of play around with it depending on what clip you want to use. Different styles, methods, and percentages of smoothness might work better or worse for you. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides, and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.